Hello YouTube, I'm David with the David West Channel. Well today I wanted to do a couple of things. I'm running low on the ashes for my fire roll. I'm not sure. It's down to about right here. So I want to make some more ashes. And I have no char cloth. So I thought I'd make some char cloth. And I have this shop tile. It's 100% cotton. And so I thought, although I like denim the best, you know, any cotton fabric will work. So we'll make some char cloth out of this. And I also want to use this to go ahead and practice a little bit with my cotton fabric and ashes fire roll. So pretty much going to come full circle on this. I'm going to get some ashes out of it. I'm going to get some char cloth out of it. And we're going to use the same material to practice with the fire roll. So, right back here I have a maple branch. It's all dried out, so that'll be good. I'll cut it up. That's what we'll burn up and make ashes out of. But you know, any, any wood ashes will work for the fire roll. It doesn't matter. Usually what I use for the fire roll, what's in this bottle, it's just whatever I happen to be burning here, whether it's pine or sycamore. All right. This maple branch is not as dead as I thought it was. It'll still work. It'll just take longer for it to burn down into ash. That'll be good for a start. Let's go ahead and get this fire roll going. All right. Now I made this top board yesterday out of a piece of pine. I found a flat spot on that branch, which had a little upswing on this part, so I accentuated this. I cut this out more to have a place for my fingers. And so, this worked beautifully yesterday for a top board. We'll use it today. And this is the green bean can that you saw me make in another video, just with the top. we we'll use it. And I guess I could use the leaves off of this maple right here. But every other time I've tried it in the past, the leaves don't really want to ignite very well, so we don't need to add that struggle to what we're trying to do. Let's go ahead and uh, make the fabric fire roll. I like a long piece of fabric. This is about eight inches long. When I'm making a fabric fire roll, because I feel like Although the outside wraps of it may loosen up, the inside keeps getting tighter and tighter. And you can only do that with a longer uh, piece of fabric for the fire roll. And while we're here, let's go ahead and make our pieces to go into the can. Let's just put about half of that pile in there. So, maybe a total of three batches.
here. All right. Now the biggest problem with a fabric fire roll is this leading edge. Let's say I put the ashes right here. Roll it up just as tight as you can get it. And the biggest problem with a fabric fire roll is that this leading edge doesn't stay wrapped up on there. So you tighten it and tighten it and tighten it with forward strokes and then when it comes time to do forward strokes and reverse strokes this leading edge wants to unwrap. So I like to go ahead and try to make this edge frayed before I get started because those strings and cords will eventually wrap itself around there and tighten it and make it into a cohesive unit. And once, once this leading edge actually secures itself to the roll, it's not long after that that you can get the ignition. And sometimes it takes a long time before you can get that leading edge to sort of hold and not come unraveled. So be patient and be persistent. All right, this is our second try. Cotton fabric fire roll. The first one I had ignition, but by the time I dug down to the ember, it had gone out and then I couldn't get another ember. So here we are on our second try, second fire roll. Third fire roll. This wouldn't happen if I wasn't trying to make a video. Yesterday I got it the first time. Smell smoke. I don't see smoke though. Oh, I see smoke. It's trying to get out now. Good. All right. Persistence paid off again, didn't it?
it's actually easier than this. I, I just having an off day today. Once it gets hot enough, it'll it'll burn down. It just take a little bit longer to get ashes than usual. But your harder woods makes more ashes, so I probably put probably only have to put half as much maple in there as I would have to put pine. Let's give it a chance to burn down, and uh, I'll turn you back on in a little bit. All right, let's put our char tin in the fire. Shouldn't take long for that to start smoking. All right. Looks like this first batch is done. When it stops smoking, it's done. So when you're using a tin can like I'm doing and you have all that air gap around the lid that I have in down there, when you take it out, you need to put, you know, a board or something over the top of it. I'm just going to take and turn this one upside down so that air can't get to it and make the char cloth burn up. Now, when that completely cools down, we'll take a look at it. Let me stoke my fire. When you're making char cloth, you really need to make it in flames. Do not try to make it on just a bunch of coals because it'll leave too much residue on the char cloth and the char cloth will not be as reactive as it, as, uh, it could be. So, while this is cooling down, that'll have a chance to flame up. All right, let's see how we did. When I turn this can back over and start to pull it out, I did it too soon and some of the char cloth was ignited. So I shoved this in there to snuff out all the oxygen getting to it. And I think it should be good now. Let's see if it's actually out this time. Let's see what we ended up with. Looks like it's all charred pretty good. Let's try a piece out. We'll try that piece out. You can see some ash right there to where it was ignited. So I will have to cover it up next time instead of turning it upside down. Some good looking char cloth. Let's try it out. First, I want to go ahead and get another, another load of this started. One more, one more batch to do. Now, this little old short piece of flint, I've used up all the sharp edges here, all the sharp edges all the way around here. 
But you know, right here next to this chalky part, which I think that's naturally in flint, where they harvest it from, it's all attached to flint. I haven't used any of that sharp edge. I bet that'd be a good one. Always take your char cloth, tear it in two, which will expose these very fine edges. And then try to try to line up all of those threads right on the very edge. And let's see if there's we can get a spark off of that edge right there. And I like to establish the coal a lot all the way across the top before I even stick it into my tinder. And there we go. Let's try another piece. That's very different than my denim that I usually use. You can see right through this. And this I won't even have to tear in half because it's got all these threads right here. Let's try that. <laughs> char cloth is always best when it first comes out of the char tin. But after it sits around a while, just like everything else, the moisture in the air affects it. And it's not as reactive as the first, the very first time you take it out of the char tin. All right, y'all. I appreciate you joining me on this fire roll, make ashes, make char cloth, check out char cloth video. I enjoyed it. We'll catch you on the next one. Well, now that the ice cream truck is gone, let me show you this. Beautiful char. And this is our last batch.